Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ntavi. If you don't know who I am and welcome back to my channel to the place where we have fun and do fun things. So if that's something that you're interested in, please click on that subscribe button and like this video and I'd be ever so grateful. Anyway, so today we're back with another episode of the review and commentary on the wife on show max. So guys, Okay, before we start, before we begin, before we get into the juicy stuff of this week's episodes, I just want to do a quick recap of last week because I feel like I didn't do the wedding episode justice. And I loved the engagement that you gave me in that video and the inputs and some of the things that I missed. And I'm going to read some of those comments and then just, you know, dig a little deeper before we move on to the next episodes. Because I just want to say that the production house is really doing an injustice to the show because they started off so well and now they're just really taking us for a ride and it's not a nice one i don't appreciate it it's upsetting me and my home girls and it's time to stop mincing the words it's time to stop hoping for the best and looking at the glass half full and just basically put it as it is and this is one of um the comments my aunt uh left me that i was like yes you are correct and i want us to dig a little deeper into these points anyway she says honestly the last episode was a proper mess which i absolutely agree there were so many wrong things it's like the production team just woke up and were told to quickly put together with to put the to quickly put something together without even knowing the previous storyline which i absolutely agree there were way too many plot holes it's like guys like <clears throat> what's happening you know what i mean like where was lerato the best friend from work exactly like why was she stuck in someone's bathroom someone which is who doing what you are her bre you are her best friend you are supposed to be at the wedding you're supposed to be either a bridesmaid or helping her to get dressed up like it just doesn't make sense it didn't make sense at all and then and why were her parents guests especially her mother who would have naturally even with her while eh <laughs> okay wait i think there's a word missing there especially her mother who, who would have naturally been with her even while she was dressing up exactly which is another point that i noticed that Langa and her parents were guests at her wedding which is like what because technically speaking the wedding is for the bride and her family they are the ones basically in charge of whatever proceedings happen that day and they are basically the ones about touring marapo you know what i mean so it didn't make sense as to why firstly the parents came later and they went to the venue to sit down and the mother wasn't helping her dress up or getting ready with her and you know the dad also and also langa because langa is her twin right and she, he's a prominent role in his life in her life so also it's like langa over larato because yes larato is the best friend but langa is the be like langa has been the womb mate you know what i mean so it didn't make sense to me why also langa was a guest and why he wasn't in there helping her dress getting her dressed up like considering their close relationship and stuff like that also she says why does she have her laptop ready on the day of her wedding exactly exactly why are you working why is your mind occupied by work if this is supposedly the most important day of your life like the most because most people are overcome with emotions are so happy are so excited to be marrying the loves of their lives that they aren't even thinking remotely about work so why is even the laptop anywhere near you at that time why are you using that as an opportunity to connect dots I, anyway and then why did the constable oh, exactly there's no context at all it why did the constable um suddenly remember details of mpande um yeah 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 valid why why did he suddenly remember that his hair was red <laughs> like that is such a defining detail that he could have like if there was anything he remembered even on the day that mpande was arrested was the fact that this guy had red hair what reminded him Wabon, story plot holes no context 
at all. I, I swear these people are like really taking us for a ride. And then, um, and the worst is that whole homophobic thing with Langa. Like all this time he was accepted as in, in the family. Now suddenly the dad is homophobic. Exactly. That's also another story plot hole. Like, what? No, guys, let's not do that. Let's not play with our emotions like that. I told you guys, we're not, we're not the ones. Like we love the story already. So why are you messing it up on purpose? It feels like you're doing it on purpose. No ways. And knowing Langa, there's no way he would ruin Khomu's day regardless. If it could keep calm when Khomu was beaten to a pulp, why would he lose it on her big day? A big mess. And I couldn't agree with you more, sissy. It was really a big, big mess. And it wasn't nice at all to watch. Like, I didn't... In as much as I did enjoy, but I didn't enjoy that mess. Like, cause your head is constantly then doing, you know, all of these things like roundabouts. Or, okay, when does this connect with this? When does this connect with this? Wait, how did we get to that part? How did we establish this part? How did we establish this fact? And it's like, guys, give us a break, okay? But anyway, I just want to quickly then move on to the review for this week which is episode 19 to 21 and if it's something that you are interested in please keep on watching okay guys so in episode 19 okay it's the day after the wedding okay we'll take it also okay before i get into these episodes stay in class uh uh guys do better like do better this is such an amazing story Dudu put her heart and soul into it and yes you are taking inspiration from it but please do it justice because it's a story that is like a cult favorite in SA and I'm sure it's not even just limited to South Africa but it's a real cult favorite and really you don't like you have the talent already to bring the story to life and you started on such a good note but I'm like, I'm just so shocked at how you're messing up literally with every passing week. With the rushed storylines, no context whatsoever, plot holes, please do better. You have the talent that is already willing and bringing these people to life. Do better for all of us. Do better for your reputation. Do better for the reputation and the, you know, integrity of the story itself. Because you, like, you have such, such a small, you know, opportunity to mess it up. But you're doing such grand things to mess it up. I just don't understand, bro. I don't understand why you guys are messing this up for us like this. But please do better. Just do better. Since you messed up Khomu's storyline, do better with Zandile and Naledi. Please. Like, this roller coaster and rushed storylines is just not cutting it anymore for the rest of us. Like, now nah, I'm, I'm going to keep on watching, but like, I'm just over it. I'm over the. I'm over the mess. <laughs> like, I'm really over it. Anyway, so in episode 19, this is the day after the wedding. Um, so, Mu goes for a run. Or all of the things that happened, the drama with the shooting, or rather the stand down, stand out, stand up, whatever you call it, um, is ringing in her head. I understand. She's traumatized. I'm like, I can imagine having a gun you know, pointed at you is not the easiest thing to get over. But also, why did you walk down the aisle, ma'am? <laughs> like, nah, that's always going to go back to that. Shomu, basically, I don't recommend. I highly do not recommend this girl. I don't recommend her line of thinking. I don't recommend her logic, if there's any. I don't recommend her worldview. That's just what it is. If she thinks this is what love is, I really don't recommend it. But yeah, anyway, so she walked down the aisle, but now she's scared. And she's scared of the fact that now 
Nicola's brothers are going to kill her and I'm just like boohoo I'm sorry I don't feel bad for you because you could have chosen better for yourself but you didn't you didn't you really didn't you didn't look out for yourself there so boohoo you know and I'm just like I don't understand also another part is now now that we have established that all of a sudden uh, Humu's dad is homophobic towards Langa um, and he's still mad at the fact that Shomu still chose to marry Mkele. Now he's alienating his kids. I don't get that. Like, I don't understand. Then why are you there if you're going to alienate your kids? You only have two kids. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't understand it. He says he loves his kids. He says he's doing that for the support. But then he doesn't speak to his kids. Or rather, he speaks to Langa, but it's like major awkward. And then Tlomu, he completely ignores when she comes to visit. So for me, it's like, eh? That doesn't make sense, guys. Where's the context? Like, what are we working from? <laughs> like, what information are we working off of? Ah, no, man, this is exhausting. Also, another exhausting one is Lerato and Lux, Lutolo. Guys, what's the story there? Like, how does it come together? Like, where did it start? Because firstly, Lerato is Slay Queen. So she's not even interested in a guy like Lux. And now you're forcing us to believe the fact that she's always wanted him? Ah, uh ah, -uh, stop it. Because we know Lerato thinks Lux is uptight. So now all of a sudden, because they slept together, and I can bet you for a fact, she doesn't even know that they slept together or not because she was clearly drunk and also whose place was that like where did they sleep and <sighs> guys 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 stop it stop it with these weird stories it's like you're just plotting things to make the time go like to make up for the 20 minutes now it's like you're just plotting in Pieces, pieces and parts of a story to just make sure that you have the full 20 minutes because this is not making sense for me like Lucolo and Lerato How did they even get to being intimate like where's the context in that <laughs> guys? Where's the build up in that like where's Where's the background story? <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm just I'm just lost and also what's losing me even more, what's losing, what's making me lose signal even more is the fact that then Lerato goes, yes, 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 what, ma'am? You didn't like this guy. If anything, you thought he was uptight and you don't normally go for guys like him because I don't even think that, you know, his take-home salary is the kind that you are even looking at. And then now it's our little secret and then you're happy about it and like... Stay in class. Stop it. Stop doing this to us. Stop it, honestly, because this is not making sense. And then, <clears throat> my other issue is, why is Lomi going to work the day after her wedding? I get honey, maybe, you know, Mkale is a Zulu man, traditionalist. You don't know these things. You know? Fine, I get it. But why are you going to work, ma'am? You're supposed to, hey, you are supposed to be as Fubensen Tota, as a snake pack, ma'am. <laughs> like, what are you doing at work? And on top of that, you are miserable. You are scared out of your mind. Like, this girl's early days of marriage are just, are just giving me major alos through, Because I'm just thinking, what are you doing, ma'am? This isn't making sense. Also, like, ish, guys, ah, 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 ah. it's not making sense for me. And I don't like it. And it's upsetting me and my homegirl. So, uh, also, why is, uh, why is Kamu's mom being so awkward? First, it was with the dad. I couldn't understand. Well, but that was warranted. Because I think she just got to a point where she's just tired of dealing with this man and his old ways of thinking, right? And him alienating the kids. So he's just like, you know, I think you must be more forgiving. You must be more accepting of Langa. Because, I mean, really, you're just going to push him away. And obviously the dad is not having that. And she's just like, I need you to grow up. And then even when Langa comes home to greet them, 
she's a bit nyana, awkward nyana. like it's giving me i don't know i don't know but it's giving me awkward right and then when Somo is home now all of a sudden she's excited and happy about the wedding and proud of her even though she wasn't happy with the fact that she was getting married to mkele like it's just not it is not making sense her reactions to what is happening in their lives is not making sense to me it is giving me major confusion major alostro where i'm just like what is happening is this woman like demented or something like not even demented but like is she okay or is it like a bipolar thing and not even to put stigma on mental health or mental illnesses but it's just not connecting for me like it's just not connecting right and also Shomu is sulking about being put off the CIT story knowing good and well that she was going to sabotage it and sulking about the fact that she's not going to be assistant editor anymore but knowing good and well where her loyalties lie now is also a bit icky for me because I'm just like why are you sulking it's not like you could continue with this anyway like eh yeah no it's, it's it's not it's not ringing for me it's not it's not connecting so anyway um wrapping up episode 19 everything was rushed everything seemed rushed the wedding the getting you guys i didn't even fit a mark i don't fit a mark the way everything is just a mother it's a mess actually it's just a mess and it's just in fit a mark anyway moving over to episode 20 right i love okay so because i've bashed <laughs> it so much but i love how in these three episodes even though there were parts that were rushed but i love there was con there was context built in episode two right because in episode one is where it is first introduced where the guys are like we where Mkhele asks to go back to Mbuba um in order for Shomu to feel safe and I think that is all connected to like her basically having the traditional wedding and being introduced to the ancestors and things like that basically being like an official Zulu wife according to Zulu culture so and then obviously the guys are like no we vowed never to do that ever again but then at the end of the day they changed their minds and Ubudom Dara was just like okay guys this is what we're gonna do and basically apologized to Shomu for their actions on their wedding day and basically was like this is our apology to you and this is what we're gonna do we're gonna do something that we said we would never do ever in our lives again without even explaining the fact that no it was a traumatic time in our lives and this and this is what happened so this is what we're gonna do to show you our alliances to you and to show you how sorry we are for how we basically represent ourselves right so that's where the mbuba storyline basically gets introduced and i'm like why can't you do that all the time for all the episodes every week introduce the idea first and then expand on the idea and then come back to the point of it you know what i mean like we don't ask for much we're not asking for much but anyway now in episode 20 that's when they leave from Buba, right and obviously as they get there everybody's tense because the last time they were in Buba, they were kids and they were running away from home and then they do a blast from the past i enjoyed that it was such a fresh take it was such a beautiful it it was such man it was it was nice it was nice to experience the like that blast from the past basically and them introducing why they are the way they are you know and where they come from basically it was a nice introduction to where the boys come from and what kind of life they lived before where they are now right so i really really enjoyed that part where we get to see them all as kids where we get to see their parents and where we get to see how their parents relate related to them and granted and i love the fact that they even in the blast from the past they showed one day 
and the events of one day yes they were defining events but it was of one day so even though it was like a lot of things happening but it wasn't context it was it was a proper build-up to for us to see what really happened you know so i really enjoyed that you know with the boys going and also the slight introduction to zandile because we all know that zandile is like an all-time high school sweet love of Nkosana. like basically they are high school sweethearts right so even being introduced to young zandile was a nice touch i was like guys you can do this so why are you taking us for fools <laughs> you know what i mean i was so mad but happy at the same time so yeah anyway so that's what happened basically where we get introduced to them in buba we see zandile as well relating with young kosana and how they were madly in love well teenage love that is when they were younger and seeing poor child basically seeing how that came together but then also i think what was nice about this episode was we got to see the duality of this family like when they were together they were wholesome good people loving family unity vibes all of that good stuff loving parents you know that are present that are affectionate all of those things and then you get to see bopo the crime lord or arms dealer whatever that man was you get to see the brutality that was him and then you get to even see how the apple didn't fall far from the tree because like he was brutal he was heartless that man when it came to business when it came to like dealing his dealings and all of those things so you so i love how they showed Bobo the husband the father and Spopo the arms dealer and just crime lord in general and showed the duality of that um but it was scary man it was really scary but i think also the thing that scared me the most in that episode was how mkele and kawe like saw their parents literally get murdered in cold blood different occasions but mkele saw his mom's hey throat gets slit and then Kawe saw his dad basically get gashed by a spear and I can only imagine what that does to a child in terms of trauma because you, like they were locking eyes well Nkale and his mother were locking eyes when they slit her throat and being that helpless and seeing you know your mother your caregiver being killed so brutally and you can't do anything about it but instead you have to run I can only imagine the kind of monster you could become because of that kind of trauma. But it still is not a reason to become a monster. And then <clears throat> also seeing Kawe, seeing his dad, like basically get stabbed with a spear and see the life literally exit his body. Hey, guys, that is trauma on a hundred. And I can only imagine. But it somehow makes sense as to why they're so violent as to why they had to fight to survive but it was really really a traumatic traumatic episode but then you see and i then love how at the end they flash back to them being in that very house that was burning down that was like yes this is how you tell a story guys yes why anyway episode 21 this is after so basically them going back to mbuba they had to ask permission from the chief in order to rebuild the house that was burned down right and so they were like we'll stick around until you make a decision until you come together with your council and make a decision we'll still be around which is why they stayed at the with uh at the guest house right so <clears throat> after the visiting of the house with the brothers so the opening scene of episode 21 is mkele basically like hey hey 
I can't even call that thing sex, bruh. Like, it was just so rough, so brutal, so... Ugh. It's giving me sexual abuse. It's giving me heavy sexual abuse. So basically, Mkhalo was using Klomu as his punching bag. Well, punching bag, really? Can we even say that? I'm sure we can. <laughs> basically, he was using her as an outlet to let out his frustrations and his whatever, which is why I'm saying it's giving me major sexual abuse because she wasn't a part of it. She was just a body that was there to help him release. And I hated that. Because also, it's giving... So now, are you the sacrificial lamb? Like, is that the life you chose for yourself? And I hate the fact that even afterwards, like, even after, like, exclaiming, clearly, like, you're hurting me. And because he was just so out of it um, and not present in that moment that he said, thank you. Thank you for what, bruh? For violating me? Thank you for what? Like, this man is so toxic, guys. I hate him. I hate Mkele. I hate him. <laughs> Like, it's toxic. And the fact that Shomu just laps it up. Ah, ah, babes. Why are you lapping it up like that? No ways. So, like, now she's becoming the sacrificial lamp. Just lapping up everything that this guy dishes out. And I hated the fact that she then, like, the next morning when, um, you know, Mkale is apologizing and stuff like that. And she's like, no, because, you know. I'm your mgam. <laughs> like, nyim, nyim gam wako. Ah! <laughs> but whenever I know when we start doing that, it's a problem. But anyway, basically, now that I'm your wife, um, you know, that's what I'm here for. No, ma'am. No! Who told you that's what wives do? Who told you that that's what uh, the role of a wife is? Who told you, ma'am? Ha ah! Ha ah! Ha uh -uh, that's not marriage. <laughs> that's not it, babes. I don't know where you got that from, but no. So, like, really, I just... ah. Um. And also, like, she's been so miserable since she got married. It makes me think, like, why did you even do it? Like, babes, you're miserable. This should be one of the happiest times in your life, but she's so miserable. Also, another story hole. The Majolas are now in Buba. Our guys. <laughs> like Bian. How? How? What is this class? Now they're going to be in a man. Um, also, I don't see how these people don't see that they're being set up by the Majolas. Like, by now, it's like wide open. I don't see how you don't see that you're being set up. But anyway. So to my overall thoughts about this week's episodes, right guys? It was a nice break from the roller coaster fast scenes. Well, fast episodes and like major action and drama, you know, squeezed into three episodes. It was like a really nice breather from all of that action. Cause I really was just over it by now. Cause they set up the storyline properly this time around. They set it up really nicely where in episode nine in episode 19 there was an idea you know introduction and then episode 20 there was the body and then episode 21 was the conclusion you know what i mean so they really did set it up nicely and i really hope they do this more often because we're tired we're tired of the plot holes we're tired of the fast like you can tell that i don't know how these people are working but it's as though some of these things are afterthoughts some of these things are to fill up time because there isn't enough time in the episode and they need to meet the 20 mark my you know the 20 mark the 20 minute mark when I'm a squad, it's a tiny fair deal, guys, because I'm just so tired of this nonsense. But, like, you can tell that some of these things are afterthoughts or, like, hey, harikatsenyana, like, filler scenes where they have to meet their target. And it's like, stop doing that. Put more thought into what you're doing. This is a good story, all on its own. Don't mess it up for the rest of us, man. You've already messed it up enough. Hey, guys. Anyway. So... Hopefully they do better next 
this week but they're not going to do better i know it for a fact because i've saw the preview i'm gonna be mad again but i'm gonna be mad with you guys <laughs> so i really hope you enjoyed this week's recap and commentary guys i really enjoyed doing these things <laughs> and i thank you so much for the engagement as well and just you know conversing in the comments and i I ask that we continue doing that if there's something that I missed if there's something that you were not happy about or something that you noticed that you were like hmm okay it wasn't so bad this time around please drop it in the comment section I'll be happy to engage with you further there but otherwise thank you guys so much for watching I hope you don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and also enjoy the rest of your day bye